I'm reading my morning newspaper. I'm reading it through this window, which is one column wide and a few lines high. You may feel that this is rather an eccentric and ineffective way of reading a newspaper, and of course you'd be quite right. Because all the time I'm looking through this window, I would be asking questions such as, how many articles are there in this column? Are there any interesting photographs? What other articles are there? Where's the crossword? And in general, where am I in this information space? Now, this is a silly way to read a newspaper, but it's very similar to the way in which we use a conventional visual display unit to look at one item of information in a large information space, whose periphery we could probably only just see if it was printed on the same scale as a newspaper. Now, this technique of windowing has many disadvantages. Perhaps the principal disadvantage is the absence of any context. I do not have a bird's eye view of the information to help me to decide where to focus my attention. Windowing on a particular item masks all the remaining items. There is a way of overcoming this windowing problem with its associated effect of masking. And it can be demonstrated very simply by taking our newspaper article and by adjusting the view that we have of the article. In this way I can focus in some detail in the central region but at the same time be aware in the peripheral regions of salient features such as headings and photographs and cartoons. In other words, I can retain a bird's eye view of the entire article. Let's apply this idea to my in-tray, an information space which is quite varied and often full of surprises. Here's a simple example in which I've used color to indicate some property of an item. Red indicates an urgent item. The yellow one is from my secretary, and telexes are always orange. By properly designing my view of this in-tray, I can focus on one item, but at the same time be aware of the salient features of other items. The color of each item, for example, is clearly visible in the outer regions. Thus, while perusing the contents of my in-tray, I always retain a bird's eye view of the entire contents. Now when an item moves into the outer region, of course, it is compressed horizontally and it is therefore a very difficult to read the text. But of course one does not want to read the text in this outer region. One wants to be aware of attributes such as color. Indeed, each item of information has two representations. One, which is appropriate to the central region of the display and which we can read, that's a high resolution image, and another low resolution image, which is appropriate to the outer regions, where we only need to recognize perhaps a color and a letter. So if we take this representation and thread it into this uh, structure, then we have the representations appropriate to the outer regions. If we then, in this central region, replace that image by an image appropriate to that central region, then we have the display that we're looking for. We can read that single item in the central region, but we are still aware of other items that are available in my in-tray. This manner of representing information is called the bifocal display because it has got two regions uh, having different resolutions. 
the central region with high resolution and the outer regions with low resolution. And we can focus on a particular item of interest while still retaining a bird's eye view of the entire in-tray.